Thank you, Mama. Thank you, Mama. Thank you, Mama. It was only set out to destroy you, woman of God. It wasn't, it, it wasn't, it didn't have nothing to do with your name, by you being a pastor. No, it ain't got nothing to be about your title. It, it's nothing. This thing that's going on in your body, it ain't, it wasn't, it ain't got nothing to do with Ruth. It is out for your title. It's out for the anointing that's on your life. It's out to destroy your faith, mother. It's out to kill your faith, pastor. Woman. And so, when I was a teenager, I wasn't promiscuous. I wasn't, I wasn't hot. So I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't have sex with a man until I was 18. I was 18 years old. And nobody told me that I just didn't desire that because I, was, I got saved at a young age. It was all working together. For my, here I am. In about two weeks, I'll be 49. I look good <laughs> Never in a, in a million years would I would have thought the stuff that I went through as a teenager, as a young adult, would have been working for my good in my in my in my golden years. But it was all working together. I couldn't see it and I didn't want it, but that baby was caught up in my lap. And I was trying to kill that baby because I didn't want that baby to live. I didn't want to resuscitate that baby. I want that baby to die. And then, when I was about 21, my daughter, my, our daughter, will be 29 next month. Yeah. Next month. Yeah. And so, I, I got conceived the baby out of wedlock, yeah. but it was working together for my good. Yeah. And I couldn't see that. The, the, the pastor wife, mm -hmm. yeah, over here, the pastor. <laughs> got pregnant out of wedlock. And, 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 and I was I was one of the, one of the one of the big people in the Baptist church as a teenager, as a young adult, and we had about 50 people in our choir. Remember that apostle? And I was the lead director of the choir. And when I came up pregnant, I had to sit down. I had to sit down, Bishop. I had to sit down because I, I came up pregnant and I didn't have no husband. So I'm telling you, young girls, your life ain't over if you done got pregnant. Your life is not over. Don't look for a man to validate your presence and your beauty. Us mothers and her, us mothers and fathers, we need to validate the beauty of our children. We need to tell them that you're beautiful, baby. And if, and if a man can't open your door for you, if he can't buy you flowers, he is not the one. If he can't catch you in prayer, and I want you in prayer, he is not the one.
chapter 8. But it was working together for my good. All of the lies and the backstabbing. Come on, all of the falling. Come on, it was a season where I didn't even want to pray. I didn't even want to read my Bible, but I was yet coming to church. It was working together for my good. It was a season of hurt that was so deep that it was growing. And anybody that came around me, it was growing on to them. But it was working together. For something else is about to arise against y'all. But stay connected. Stay in prayer. Stay in prayer. Because it's only going to, we already know it's going to be a lie. It's a lie. Just stay in prayer. And don't let nothing, nothing, never ever let nothing divide you. Lord, have mercy. It's something getting ready to spring up. Lord, help me tonight. Jesus. Oh, God. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Now, the King James Version said, and we, and we know that all things work together. It was working. See, one thing about a job, I work for the state of Mississippi, Lord, help me today. And when you come to my, to my shop, my staff know you're not going to come and just sit down. You got to come and what? Work. So we can be productive at the end of the day. So when I look at it's working together, that means that it was just working, it was just marinated, it wasn't looking good, it was all kind of stuff that was thrown against you. But it was yet working, it was yet intertwining. Just like if you have a tree on this property, that tree roots can grow all the way down to the Burlington, or fall all the way down to the end street. Because the roots just grow so far out. They don't just connect in one area, they grow so far out. And that's how it is when things work together for you. Everything in your lifespan, whether you are 20, whether you are 30, whether you are 50, all of those years are working together. And it's working for your good. It might not feel like it. You might not can see it, mother. It might be looking so dark and so dim, and there's no way on earth that you can that you can fathom that it's working together, but it's working. Watch this. Watch this right here. It's going to bless you. It's going to bless you. It says working together for good for those who love God to those who are the called according to, what it say? His purpose. His purpose. Now check this out. Now the message Bible says, meanwhile, the moment we get tired in the way. How many can say I got, I done got tired in this way, Pastor? Take a side for me quick for all you deep folks. And so a couple of weeks ago, a month ago, I went for all, all of you women that don't do your yearly. I'm challenging you to challenging you tonight, whether you're old or young, go do your yearly exams. Go do them. Because it'll save your life in the end. Can I get a witness in the house for the women? Come on, I got more women than that. Can I get a witness for the women? And so a month ago, the state will pay for us to go, so I'm gone because it's free. Hello. <laughs> and so I went for my yearly. My, my uncle was a little tender. So she said, Carol, first of all, we talked about our weight. <laughs> Girl, yeah, I'm okay. Don't worry about it. So she began to, to challenge me on what she was doing. And then we went on with the test, and I was a little tender in one of my areas, first lady. And she said, well, do you drink a lot of coffee? And I said, yeah, I have a big old cup full of sugar, ain't nothing but white, just milk, every morning. She said, well, if you're gonna do that, you gotta take some vitamin E, take your 400 milligrams of vitamin E. So if you feel a little tender, then you know you drink coffee, this is a one-on-one, -on -one, class one-on-one, -on -one, English. Health, health. <laughs> Take you some vitamin E daily, and it'll help with the tenderness. It'll help your hair grow, help your skin, help your nail. And so we went on, and we did that part of the procedure, and then we went to the next room to do the bottom. I said, well, I said, well, girl, is it looking all right? She said, yeah, I think it's looking okay, Carol. I'm all right. I said, okay. I said, you hear from us in a few days. It's okay, girl. We're cool like that, because I've been going for so long. This is Monday, so by Friday, I received the letter. You know if the letter is real thin, then you know you okay. You ain't here, they ain't about nothing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so normally the apostle will put my mail on the bed, so when I come in, I gotta go watch Judge Mathis. I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. Because he keeps it real. Yeah. So I go on to the bed, and this particular day, Evangelist, he had the mail laying on the, on, on the thing, on the end table at the door. And so I saw my name, I was like, hmm. And when I picked it up, immediately the spirit told me something's wrong. Because it was thick, Pastor. It was thick. It wasn't the usual thin letter. And so I, we spoke, kids. I went on to the back. He's in the living room. I laid, got in the bed. And I opened the letter and I read it and I 
was in me. And I got this hard because it wasn't good what they were telling me. And so I started to cry. I started to holler. I started to scream. I started to run and tell the apostle. And the Holy Spirit of God said, just leave it. And so I laid down for about two hours. And then our daughter came home with the grandbaby. He comes in and just jump on the bed. And I get up and we can jump and have fun. And so we were trying to figure out what we were going to eat that night. I'm trying to help the church tonight. And while this was going on, I started to call Pastor I almost called my best friend and said, look, you have to get somebody else to preach because I can't do this. Before. I can't do it. I almost called you and told you I couldn't come. I ain't lying. <laughs> and so I sit up in the bed and I had it already in the bed. And my daughter said, Mama, Mama, what's that? And I said, Pastor said, what's that? I said, that's that letter. I said, that's the letter. I got my results from my mammogram. And then she said, what? Well, he said he stopped and he knew something was wrong because of the way I was looking, Shell. And he said, well, what's, what did it say? I said, it wasn't good. He said, it's so nice. Yes. My Lord. And I said, I got a call. I said, when you know it's serious is when you got to call your insurance for approval for them to run the next phase of tests. This happened last month. Teacher. And so I my daughter is not even saved. And immediately the prophet is, I speak what I see. Right. Stood up and said, oh, mama, don't worry about that. They ain't gonna find me, that's just routine. And immediately my spirit grabbed the whole to it. I said, oh, okay, all right. And I got all right and we went and ate it. So the next week came and I was procrastinating at work because I do so much at work now, I do so much. My hands is in everything at work. And so I was procrastinating with calling them, first lady, to, to get approval to, 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 to make the next appointment. Yeah. And so I went to the bathroom one morning because I was just sick on the stomach. And while I was in the bathroom, my phone rang. And it was my doctor calling me. And she said, I said, hello. <laughs> and put that other thing that, you know, that white people go on something. Hello? <laughs> you glad, yeah. waiting on you to call. She said, oh, man. I said, I went ghetto. I said, oh, girl, I know it. I, I ain't had time yet, but I'm going to call. I'm going to call today, and then I'll call you right back in five minutes. So I knew that it was serious. So make a long story short, about two weeks ago, I had to be pre-admitted into the hospital. That's how serious it was. For another test. And so I didn't tell the whole church. I just told them, Victoria, I think I told her, I told a few of my unmarried and the head general intercessor in our ministry. I hadn't even told my mom yet. And I said, I'm not telling everybody. Amen. Because right. everybody don't have your interest at heart. Nothing to my ministry. I love my ministry. I love them. And they know that I do. But I know people that's, that's going to touch heaven for me. And so I had them praying. And Marquisha, raise your hand. We were in constant talk that morning. She was going to go with me just for moral support. And I didn't even, I wouldn't even call. I, just, I waited till I got there. And I called her. Well, I texted her. And I told her, here, I'm in the back. I'm, I'm going to be okay. And she just wanted to go for moral support with the apostle. And so I, I went through. I'm trying to help us get to the time when we get tired of, in our way. And so they got me on in the back. And the woman was just carrying me on a little pink robe that represents the breast cancer. Yeah. Hallelujah to God. And so she was trying to make me as comfortable as possible because she knew that I was nervous and I was on edge. And I didn't know what to expect. That's right. She said, it's going to be okay. We want you to go in there, do this, put this on, and come on over here. We went, did all that and got in the next room. She said, now we're going to have you lift up and tuck, tuck, tuck all that fat in the body. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> make a long story short, they took all these film. And she kept, it was so ironic that they had my last year mammogram with my this year. And last year was just nothing. And this year had a big old mass and they had a big circle around it. And I began to just decree and declare God. My you know said, You said, I shall live and I shall not die. I said, That's what your words say, God. I said, I've been good with God. I said, I've been faithful. I said, I have been good in everything, but I've been good. And I said, God, I, I begin to confess to God the love that I have for Him and the faithfulness that I have for Him. I said, God, I've been paying my tithes and my offering, God. I said, God, I've been doing the things that you command me to do, God. I said, but God, this one thing, I need you to help me out of God. And I was just 
herself shaken. And she said, Carol, we might have to go down and do an ultrasound. She said, but I'm going to take these film down. She said, we're going to do one more last one. And we're going to take, I'm going to take them down for the radiologist can read them. My pastor was in the lobby. They wouldn't even, even let him come back with me. And then when she looked me up and, and smashed it, it was almost flat. And she could see the distress that was on my face. It was, I was in distress. But I was saying, God, I need you. I'm not going to give up on you, Jesus. Because that's what your words say, God. And I begin to say, God, you said it before one shot or one tittle or one second on the word. You said that heaven and earth will be passed away. And I said, God, you say it'll be no more. I begin to speak the word of God. She said, Carol, put your robe on. Come back out in the, in the lobby and sit and wait. I'll be back. I said, yes, ma'am. And I called Marquisha. I called her right before we were getting ready to pray. She walked back in. I said, kid, I got to go back in and call you. And she didn't know I was just with me. I need a God. She said, oh, Carol, go in the room and put your clothes on. It was just some overlapping tissue. You okay? And I said, oh.
us. And he's working for our good. 